I've decided to install um, solar power in my storage shed. It's mainly to run the lights because the storage shed doesn't have any windows. I bought all the components online, mostly on eBay, and it cost just over £100. But before I fix anything to the shed, I'm going to wire it all up and check that it's all working. Here's the solar panel. It's a 12 volt, 40 watt panel. It's mounted on an aluminium frame. And the frame comes with fixing holes. Its maximum output is 3 amps, but it would need a really sunny day to reach that. It's got just two cables, labelled positive and negative, so it's all very simple. Now today's a typically cold and cloudy British autumn day, but I'll turn the panel over, connect it to my multimeter, and see how much electricity it's generating. So negative to negative, and as I connect up the positive, the multimedia should register a voltage. Good, that's working. I'll zoom in on the multimeter, which is set to the 10 to 50 volt range. It's actually reading just over 20 volts, way above the 12 I was expecting, but I guess that's where the next gadget comes in. I need to quickly make up some extension wires. These will be properly connected in the final installation, but for now I'll just twist a couple of wires together and wedge them into the connectors. So I don't get confused, I'm using red wire for the positive and black for the negative. I'll leave that red wire hanging off the edge of the bench so it doesn't touch the black one and short out. To stop the wires falling out, I'll tape the connectors with some insulating tape. Those are done, so I'll get them out of the way. I need to be careful the bare wires don't touch. Right, now I'm ready for the next component. This is the charge controller. This regulates the power coming from the panel. It stops the battery from being overcharged and also stops it from running completely flat. The black sensor on top is a temperature sensor it'll shut off the system if things get too old. It's kind of the brains of the outfit. I'll zoom in and show how it connects up. There are three pairs of connectors, a positive and a negative for each. A pair for connecting the solar panel, a pair for connecting the battery, and a pair for connecting the load, which for my shed will be the lights. So first off, I'll connect up my solar panel using the extension wires I've just made. As ever, the black wire negative to the negative connector of the charge controller. And the red wire to the positive. Just check they're nice and tight. I'll tidy those out of the way for the moment and leave space for the battery. This is the battery I'll be using. It's a leisure battery out of a caravan that my neighbour was scrapping, so I got it for free. It's been sat for a while discharged, so it may not be any good, but it's going to be worth a try. The terminals are clearly marked, positive and negative. I'll use these red and black wires to connect it up. I find that these small Jubilee clips are the right size for these round battery terminals. Just slacken them off a bit. Tuck the bare end of the wire inside. Double check that the red wire is going to the positive terminal 
then inspect the Jubilee clip over the terminal and tighten the screw. Then the same for the black wire on the negative terminal. So there are the two wires. I need to be careful they don't touch and short the battery out. I'll just move it out of the way. Now get the charge controller again so I can connect up the battery. It's usually safer to start with the negative wire. Just slide in the black wire. And tighten up the screw. That's good and tight. And then the same for the positive wire. There, the display of the charge controller has come on. So that's working too. I'll just zoom in on the display to show what's going on. This graphic top left represents the panel. The flashing arrows shows it's generating power and charging the battery at 12.8 volts. The battery, the graphic in the middle here, is 75% charged and has a smiley face, so maybe it's not too bad. That's all there is to the charge side. The solar panel connected to the battery via a charge controller. Just four wires. For my shed lights, I'm using these cheapo car reversing lights. You can get these at most car parts places, or of course online. I've replaced the standard bulbs on the left here with these funny looking LED bulbs. The LEDs should give the same amount of light, but use much less power, so my batteries can last longer. To connect it up, Again, there's just two wires to connect. Negative first, then tighten it up. Then as soon as I connect the positive, the light should come on. Yes. I'll just tighten this up. And get these wires out of the way. So that's the setup all working. The panel connected to the charge controller here. The battery, positive and negative, also connected to the charge controller. And the light, also connected to the charge controller. The charge controller sits in the middle, managing the power and keeping everything safe. I got all this for just over £100. I've disconnected the light, as there's one other thing I want to try. I don't really need this for the storage shed, but I expect it'll come in handy. It's a power inverter, which will allow me to run ordinary power tools from the battery. It converts the 12 volt DC battery power to 24 volt AC power that you get from a normal wall socket in the house. It's got a socket for a UK 3-pin plug on one end, and also an on-off switch. The other end has two fat cables with clips for connecting to the battery. Before I try it out, I'm going to make a quick modification. Because the inverter runs directly from the battery, it isn't protected by the charge controller. For added safety, I want a circuit breaker, like a big fuse, to protect the inverter. This one is rated at 100 amps. If the current goes above that, the brake will trip and cut off the power. 
and then it can be reset with this little lever. I'll wire it into the red, that's the positive cable, on the inverter. I'll take the cable off to make it easier. They just unscrew from the inverter. And put that aside. Cut the cable about halfway along, doesn't matter exactly where. Strip back the insulation. This knife isn't really the best tool. I must get myself some proper wire strippers. Anyway, that's one done. Then again, the same the other side. The ends of the breaker just unscrew. And inside is a little collar. Slide the casing over the cable first. Twist the wires a bit, then slip the collar on. Insert the wire into the breaker and tighten up the screw. Then replace the cover. It just screws on. Same the other side. Cover. Collar. Insert. Tighten and screw the cover back. I just need to reattach the cable to the inverter. These washers are a bit fiddly. OK, that's back together. And the breaker is installed. These clamps attach directly to the battery terminals. Black cable first, onto the negative terminal. Need to make a good connection. Then the red one. When I switch it on, the fan starts up, so that's working. I'll test it with this drill. I've put a hole saw bit in the end just to make it easier to see it working on the video. It just plugs in like an ordinary wall socket. Switch on the inverter and there goes the fan. It is very noisy and the drill works as if it's plugged into the mains. So I now have my solar panel connected to the charge controller and it's charging the battery. Then connected to the battery is the inverter with a circuit breaker in there for added protection. The inverter and the breaker together cost about £36.